Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has said that Russia's bragging about its nuclear weapons is fueling a dangerous arms race. A few days into the invasion, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his country's nuclear forces to be on alert. Putin warned that if the West gets involved in Ukraine, then they will face never-seen-before consequences. And this brought to the fore a real nuclear threat in the 21st century. There is now a serious political debate in the world about what to do if Russia uses tactical nuclear weapons or other weapons of mass destruction, including chemical weapons. Zelensky made these comments during his virtual address at the Doha Forum. He told the members of Ukraine's history how the once nuclear advanced country had to let go of its weapons, how they were promised security and safety in exchange of its nukes. In the 1990s, Ukraine gave up the world's third largest nuclear arsenal. It was the greatest contribution to global protection against nuclear disaster that has ever been made. In exchange for this contribution, our state received written promises of security from the strongest states in the world, in particular from Russia. Ukraine once had the world's third largest nuclear arsenal. It inherited them from the Soviet Union, but Kiev had to give them up. In 1994, Ukraine joined the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Ukraine entered as a non-nuclear weapons state, which meant Kiev had to transfer all its nuclear warheads to Russia. It also had to dismantle its strategic delivery vehicles. In 1996, Ukraine gave up its last nuclear warhead. In 2001, its last missile silo was demolished. Russia, on the other hand, has approximately 6,000 nuclear warheads, the largest stockpile of nuclear weapons in the world. Its nuclear capacity makes Russia a force to be reckoned with. The sheer number of nuclear warheads available globally becomes even more terrifying when looking at how swiftly they can be launched. I think it barely matters where the weapons are located and it almost barely matters the, uh, the details. They have over 2,000 operationally deployed warheads and that is enough to inflict totally unprecedented damage on a global scale. Uh, it's, it's beyond what is imaginable. For more insight on this, we are being joined live by Russian affairs expert Fred Weir from Moscow. Good evening to you, Fred. Thank you for being with us. Now, would you agree with President Zelensky's comments on this, uh, especially consi considering North Korea Kim Jong-un's latest launch of the intercontinental missile, talking about uh, this arms race? Well, I remember uh, the 1990s pretty well, and um, it was a joint effort. The United States basically uh, bankrolled it to uh, dismantle the nuclear forces, former Soviet nuclear forces that were left in Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. Um, they all participated. They all um, had no use for those weapons because all the nuclear keys, the technicians uh, were in Moscow. So it... it it, it's a bit of a stretch to say that Ukraine had been a nuclear weapons power. Um, it, otherwise, Mr. Zelensky's point is quite right. They were given security guarantees uh, by uh, under the Budapest Memorandum, uh, which was signed by the United States and Russia, which guaranteed Ukraine, Ukrainian ter territorial integrity and sovereignty. Uh, the Russians did quite rudely violate that in 2014 when they annexed Crimea uh, the, and what they're doing now is like way beyond the scope of all that but um, Mr. Zelensky bringing up nuclear weapons really isn't very pertinent. Mm. Well, we know that Russia has the world's largest stockpile of nuclear weapons and some world leaders believe Putin to be nuclear volatile. Putin has warned that if the West gets involved in Ukraine, then they will face never seen before consequences. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, I was in a, on a talk show last night, um, not, not on your network, where the 
announcer kept saying that Russia is threatening to use nuclear weapons. Uh, it's my very job description to follow everything that comes out of Russian institutions like the Kremlin and the Defense Ministry, and they are not doing that. They're not threatening to use weapons of mass destruction in Ukraine. There hasn't been a single word uh, from any Russian institution like that, and uh, they, in fact, deny it. That just needs to be made clear. What they have done, as you quite rightly noted, uh, is they put their nuclear forces on alert early in this war. Um, and they have done that and they have reiterated that if the West uh, gets involved, that is through a no-fly zone or peacekeepers or the sorts of things that are being uh, breeded about in the West, maybe you know, to get involved to, on Ukraine's side, that will immediately put Russia in collision uh, with NATO forces. And the Russian nuclear doctrine uh, does stipulate that under certain circumstances, if there's an existential threat to the Russian state, they could make first use of nuclear weapons. Um, by the way, the American military doctrine is quite similar. Nobody has a no first use policy, unfortunately, in this, you know, in this reckless world. But uh, the Russians are playing this game of brinksmanship, and um, it's, it's very dangerous, a little bit reckless. But clearly, their message is to the West, not to Ukraine, with, with these nuclear alerts, that is, stay out of Ukraine. Mm. And Fred, what kind of an impact could this rhetoric have then on global stability in terms of security? Oh, I think this, this war is, is a disaster on every level. Uh, however, it turns out in, in Ukraine, Europe, European security is already deeply undermined. Uh, Russia has been driven into pariah state status, and that's not good. Um, it, it will be a long time clawing its way back to any kind of global uh, position. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, Russia will remain a uh, not predictable place. I live here and I'm deeply worried about that. Uh, but also the, the realignment of, of global you know, powers. Uh, you know, we did not get away from the American unipolar moment uh, and other powers are coming in out like China and India, Brazil, these countries um, are, are, are having to take sides, having to, to um, deal with this turmoil and it's going to change seismically, change the whole world order. Absolutely, Fred. Thank you very much for your valuable insights on the latest. Thank you.